pick and rolls with Dame and Giannis. Everyone was talking about it when the trade happened. Have not been ran anywhere near as commonly as people would have liked. There's been 42 going into yesterday. Killian Hayes and Jalen Duran have ran 43. Eric Gordon and Yusuf Nurkic have ran 50. Tyler Hero and Thomas Bryant, Miami's backup center, have ran 52. Malik Monk and JaVale McGee have ran 56. Jeremy Sohan and Zach Collins have ran 58. So, new head coach, new players, lots to integrate, but given how much that was hyped, it's interesting to see how that's going. Also worth noting, just new head coach in general and slightly new defensive scheme from what a lot of those guys have been running for a long time. There's some adjustments, but let you touch on it more reek but like you say there's definitely yeah. not been a smooth transition to start the year you know and if if coach bud was still there i would understand the lack of pick and rolls but new coach you maybe expect like why don't we try this shit out like we have two of the best offensive players in the world let's see what we can do and it's like in that knicks game i think it was the Knicks game like they ran one like handoff action and it was like late in the game and it worked like they ain't got an open shot off of it and made it like it worked like so maybe try this a little more. But the offensive struggles, I don't really think that's my concern because Dame's starting off kind of slow. He's in a new environment for the first time in his in his career, you know, since, like, being a rookie. Like, this is a brand-new team to him. And he's playing with somebody that demands the offensive attention like Giannis does. And also some other, like, really good offensive players, too, which he hasn't really had the luxury to play with to that level, to that degree. So the offensive struggles, I think they'll be fine. Middleton's been kind of on a minutes restriction too. So, you know, they're not really at full capacity there. Some of their guys have been shooting the ball really well, which is a good sign for this team. It's the defense for me. That's was always a concern when they traded away Drew Holiday because they already kind of lacked other viable wing defenders. They had Javon Carter last year, but he's also gone too. So losing a lot of your grit on, you know, the wing defensively. Chris Middleton's not the defender he once was. Pat Connaughton's a fine defender. You know, you're asking, like, Malik Beasley to be the big time. That's why Jalen Brunson's getting 45, because Dame can't guard and Malik Beasley can't guard. And you can't ask Connaughton to guard smaller guards like that. That was always my concern, right? But I'm thinking, you got Giannis, you got Brooke Lopez. Those guys can clean a lot of shit up. This is what I hate, though. I'm not a drop coverage fan. The only time drop coverage really works is when you have really elite guards that can navigate through those screens. That's when drop coverage is effective. That's why you, you can see the Bucks have been able to run it because they've had Drew Holiday. Boston can run it. Um, but they don't have those kind of defensive guards and wings to be able to do that constantly. And I've been seeing Brooke Lopez kind of get that space eaten up between them in that drop coverage. And that's how Brunson was able to get off like he did the other night. Maxi had a feast against them too, which those are elite guards, but it's concerning for me, man. Like, and I was watching, Nikias was on JJ's podcast, him and Steve Jones, and they were basically saying, like, JJ basically said, they look lost out there defensively, like they're just guessing on pick and roll coverages. It's different every time. One time they're forcing them to the middle, and then it's, you know, forcing them to the outside. Like, it's all different. They're not, you know, it's one time they're icing this, the ball handler. Like, it's, it's not really consistent. At least, like, the years prior, it's consistent drop coverage is how we're going to play it. It's just kind of all over the place right now. Maybe they will figure it out. Like you said, Devin, a young a young head coach, a rookie head coach, it's a bit of a concern for a veteran team to look this lost defensively that most of those guys that have been with this team have been in those championship environments. So it's a little bit of a concern. Drew Holiday was a big loss for them defensively. They'll probably figure it out. But the first couple of weeks has looked very bad. Yeah, I didn't expect it to be like, this much of a concern and really the main point off of that that like kind of had me there was that thing you mentioned about like Giannis and Brooke Lopez you would think being able to clean a lot of it up looking at the roster on paper yeah the perimeter defense doesn't look great but I almost want to compare it at least on a surface level to like the Utah Jazz with Rudy Gobert right like they did not have much in terms of like perimeter guard wing defense but Rudy Colbert is like a rim protector, is an inside guy, did enough to where it covered a lot of holes, at least throughout the regular season. And when you have a guy the caliber of Brooke Lopez, and especially a weak side help defender the caliber of Giannis, you think, oh, if guys are getting blown by, well, that second, that second line of defense, that last line of defense before they get straight to the rim, 
you think that'd be really good. And at the end of the day, it, it just ain't working. And I don't know if it'll it, – mixing that with the new scheme, like talent could probably cover up for like a new scheme and a new scheme could probably cover up – or like an established scheme rather could cover up for like the talent not all the way being there. But yeah, I do think having both at the same time is like, oh, it's – one of them can't really cover up for the other one. And that puts them in a really tough spot. But then even them just not being able to out offense teams, like with just the raw firepower they have, it should be more. And I think you mentioned this as well, that I don't expect the Damian Lillard struggles to continue. I think he will end up finding himself because he is just now learning, like, when should I defer? When should I really take over? Because he hasn't really had anybody to defer to since what, like LaMarcus Aldridge left in like 2015. And <laughs> that's quite a while ago. So he's going to find himself, I think, just fine. Chris Middleton is a bit more concerning just because he's regressed a bit over the past couple years, but he still has a lot of big games. And I think definitely we'll see more from him than we have so far this year. But overall, like these concerns are – are definitely a bit more than we thought because before the season we all said, yeah, this is going to be like seamless. He'll fit in. He'll fit like a glove, like the way Damon Yams, we can already envision it. And it's like, there's got to be something more there because there's no way a bunch of us sitting here on YouTube can envision something in a, a paid NBA coach can't envision that same thing. So like, I don't know why they aren't running these pick and rolls because like you said, it, it like it works every time they've done it. It's very effective, but then they're like, "Yeah, let's let's not do it," especially when they need it, and it's like they're losing games, and the offense isn't good enough. And it's like, "Yeah, here's a quick little spark plug. Make this our bread and butter. If that's our bread and butter, we can just go to that, go to that, go to that, and have like some mix-ups and different actions you can do with that." That's like a basis for a whole offense. Like that's a system. You know, they, we've heard talk this week, and we, you know, James Harden said, "I'm a system." Like. Damn, Giannis pick and rolls. That's the foundation of a system right there. And what you can do off of that with passing out to Brooke Lopez or passing out to Chris Middleton or Giannis rolls or Dame gets over the screen and gets an open shot or he's able to drive to the rim because of the way they defend it. And it's like so many different things you can do out of that. Even with Malik Beasley out in the corner. So many different things you can do with that. But that's not what they want to do. I don't know why, but at the end of the day, I guess I'm not the paid NBA coach. And I get, you know, I don't know if it's a thing coming from the Nick Nurse tree because Nick Nurse was not good at half court offense either. But might be a thing, but at least Nick Nurse would have these boys out there playing defense. Chaotic, chaotic defensively. Defense, like their defense is yeah. like, their defense already kind of like, I think a couple years ago when Lopez was out, took a little bit of a step back, but they were back good last year. The offense was just kind of iffy. Now the offense is iffy. And the defense is like not good, so it's only six games in. They're four and two. We're talking about them like they're like two and four. Yeah. Still two games over five hundred. They won a few games in a row. Like they'll they'll be fine. They'll probably be fine. They'll figure it out. But you know, six games in, I think it's a valid little overreaction. Now, if we get to like twenty five games in, and there are still these questions, their guards are still getting torched defensively. Um, we're not seeing Dame on his pick and rolls. Then I think we can like really hit the panic button just a little bit more. Yeah, like you say, it's it's still a small sample size. And even all the concerns we just mentioned about their offense, last year they were 15th in offensive rating and, again, small sample size, but this year they're 10th. They're above where they were last year. So they're okay there. Now, we'll see how that moves going forward because already the rotation is starting to transition a little bit more defense first. Malik Beasley is still starting, but his minutes have severely diminished already throughout the year starting about 30, 31 minutes a game to start the year. Last game, he was down to 14, and that's been a trend. He was down from 31, down to 25, down to 22, and now down to 14. So he's been shooting well, but shooting's just not what they've been needing right now, even though Chris Middleton's on a minutes restriction, even though Brooke Lopez hasn't been shooting the ball great so far this year, even though Dame's had his struggles. The offense, they'll be okay, even though... Previously in the past, Milwaukee has been kind of a team where it's like if they struggle to sh shoot from three, that can be when they struggle. But typically that's because they're predicated on a top five defense. And that's evidently very much not been the case this year. Now, they've gone from 30th to 24th in defensive rating. They were rock bottom for a little bit. And again, part of that's just where they're starting to transition. Jay Crowder has become more and more a permanent 
part of this rotation. They need his defense out there. Beauchamp is starting to eat up more of Malik Beasley's minutes, and he's been very impressive this year. Nothing great, but considering he wasn't a significant role player last year, he's shooting the ball pretty well. He's defending pretty well. If Malik Beasley can't be this defensive stopper that they hoped he was going to be, which, let's face it, he's probably not going to be, Beauchamp might find his way into even more minutes. So they've got some better personnel that they're starting to integrate into that defense. And like you guys mentioned, it's just losing Drew Holiday and having to rely on that drop coverage that is just going to be nowhere near as effective without Holiday, considering the personnel they have. So it's going to be an adjustment. Like you said, Reek, we'll see where they're at 2025 20, games in. Will they be a top five defensive team? Will they be a lock in for that anymore? Maybe not, but they should still be at the very least a top half defensive team. There's no reason why they shouldn't be. They still have good enough interior defense or should have good enough interior defense for that. They just got to figure out a few things on the perimeter. Can they get there? We'll see. That's for the next couple of months to decide. But offensively, they should be fine. We'll just see what they can integrate more with Giannis and Dame in a two-man game over the next few months. Hopefully that becomes a little bit more of their offense because the offense has been okay, but I think there's still a little bit more to unlock there. 